In this video, we're going to cover conditionals in Python. We're going to cover if, we're going to cover if else, and also we're going to cover if, l, f, else, and also we're going to cover a lot of other notes in this video about conditionals in Python. So please just stay tuned. So as you can see here, we have two variables, a and b. And now suppose that we want to check something like this. We want to say if a is less than or equal to b, in that case, we want to print something like this, a message like this, A is less than or equal to B. And now if I run the code, as you can see, yes, because A is less than or equal to B, then we are printing this thing. But if I change the values of these, for example, let's change the value of A to a five, and if I run a code, as you can see, this thing will not be printed out because as you can see, a is not less than or equal to b. So as you can see, this is the general structure of if conditions in Python. If something is true, then we put a colon, and after that, we put the thing that we want to do if this condition is true. And remember that, as you can see here, we have something called indentation. So how should we create this indentation? It's very simple. First of all, for example, here, if I press enter, by default, this indentation will be created. But suppose that for any reason, you don't have this kind of thing. So in that case, you can press a tab on your keyboard. And as you can see, you have that indentation. And this indentation uh, helps Python to know that this piece of code, this part of the code is going to be run only if this condition is true. And remember that this indentation is a must. I mean, if I, for example, remove this indentation and if I run a code, as you can see, we get an error. So remember that these indentations are a must because th these indentations help Python to figure out which part of the code must be evaluated if this specific condition is true. But now let's talk about another thing. And before that, let me change this thing. I mean, the message that we want to print if the condition is true. And for example, I want to have a check mark. And maybe you ask, oh, how did I, for example, insert a check mark? So in order to do so on Windows, I should press Windows key and the dot, I mean, Windows and dot on my keyboard. And after that, as you can see, this window will pop up and I will select this one. And that's it. As you can see, it has inserted a check mark. We want to talk about other operations like this. So if you want to say if A is less than B, we should use something like this. If you want to say less than or equal, we should use this. If A is greater than B, so we should use this one. This means greater than or equal. And uh, for example, here, if I want to say if A is equal to B, in that case, I should use two equal signs. This is very important. So you should not put one equal sign. You should put two equal signs. So if we want to say if A is equal to B, we should use this symbol. I mean, two equal sign. So if A is equal to B, in that case, it is going to print a check mark. And if I run a code, as you can see, because A and B are not equal, so in that case, it is not going to print this one. But for example, if I change the value of B to a five, and if I run a code, as you can see, it is going to print the check mark because A and B are equal. So that's it. And what is uh, the opposite of equal? For example, suppose that we want to say if A and B are not equal. For doing that, we should put something like this. I mean, an exclamation, an exclamation mark, and then an equal sign. And this means not equal. So this means equal being equal. And this means not being equal. So in this case, we are saying if A and B are not equal, in that case, we are going to print a check mark. And if I run a code, as you can see, because A and B are not equal, we are going to have a check mark. And also, we can make all of these stuff a little bit more fancy. For example, as you can see here, we have defined three variables, and we can say, okay, if A is less than B and it is less than C, in that case, I want to print a check mark. So if I run a code, as you can see, because of this condition is true, it is printing a check mark. And you can have other things. I mean, you can combine all of these stuff. So so here we are saying that if A is less than B and B is greater than, than C, in that case, we are going to print a check mark. So if I run a code, 
because this condition is not true, it is not going to print a check mark. Now let's talk about if else conditions. For example, as you can see, this is the mark of a student, and we want to define a condition. We want to say if the mark of a student is greater than or equal to 50, in that case, we're going to print passed. I mean, that a student has passed, I mean, that specific exam. But otherwise, and for saying otherwise, in Python, we should simply type else, and then I put a colon. So that's it. So if mark is greater than or equal to 50, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print passed. And otherwise, I mean else, I'm going to print failed. Failed, not dailed. <laughs> So if I run the code, as you can see, because the mark is uh, greater than or equal to 50, because of that, it is going to print passed. But for example, if I pass a mark like this, and if I run the code, because it is not greater than or equal to 50, because this condition is not true, this part of uh, the code will be run because this condition is not true. So it is going to run the else part. But now let's talk about another example. And before going further, I need to talk about something. And that thing is that in some countries, the marks are not from 100. For example, uh, in some countries like Iran, the marks are from 20. And for example, if, you, if your mark is below 10, then in that case, uh, you're going to fail. But if it is above 10, then you're going to pass. And I don't know whether you know it or not, but actually there are two countries. One of them is Iran and the other one is Iraq. These are two different countries. And I know that in Persian, and Arabic, my native language is not Arabic, but I know that in Persian and Arabic, Actually, this is not because in, in English they pronounce it Iraq, but actually this sound is not it is but because in English they don't have any sound, they pronounce it k. But in Persian and Arabic, this is for example, this is another example. This is a uh, this is the name of a book, Quran, but actually the name of this book is not Quran, it is. Quran, but because they cannot pronounce the q sound in English because they don't have any q sound, in that case, they pronounce it k. And there are a lot of other countries that they that they have q uh, sound, but because in English they cannot have they cannot pronounce q sound, they say k. Anyway, so these are two countries and two different countries. So as I've told you, in some countries the marks are from twenty. And suppose that we want to have something like this. We want to say, okay, if the mark is greater than or equal to 18, in that case, the score is A. If the mark is less than 18, but greater than or equal to 15, in that case, the score is B. If the mark is less than 15 and greater than or equal to 10, in that case, you want to have a score of C. And if the mark is less than 10, the students uh, need to be failed, unfortunately. And now let's start coding. So first of all, let's define a variable called, for example, mark. This is the mark of the student. And now let's define our conditions. We can simply type if the mark of the student is greater than or equal to 18. In that case, in that case, I want to print A. So the score of the student is A. And else if, and for saying else if, we have LF. In Python and maybe you ask oh what is elif and why we're not putting if and else and these kinds of things you I know that you have millions of questions right now but please wait a minute I will answer all of them by the end of the video but some questions cannot be answered yet because we need some prerequisites so please wait a minute anyway I know that you might not understand some pieces of this puzzle yet, but you will get it by the end of the video, so please wait. Anyway, so we are saying if the mark is greater than or equal to 18, in that case, we're going to print A. And else if the mark, I mean LF, the mark is greater than or equal to 15, then we're going to print B. And once again, remember that I know that you're not probably understanding the whole parts of the puzzle but you need to wait please wait a minute anyway and then we say lf the mark is greater than or equal to 10 in that case i'm going to print c and otherwise i mean else i'm going to print the students has 
failed. So now let's talk about those millions of questions that you have one by one. The first question is, okay, why we should type something like LF? And why not simply type F? Why should we type LF? What is the reason? Well, the reason is that there is a difference between F and LF. So when we are using F, it is going to check this condition. It is definitely going to check this condition. But when we are using LF, it is going to check this condition only if the previous condition was not true. I mean, if the mark was greater than or equal to 18, it is going to print A and it is not going to care about any of these things. It is not going to care about any of these things if this condition was true. So this is the benefit of using LF. LF causes this piece of the code, I mean this part of the code, only be evaluated if the previous condition was not true, was not correct. Otherwise, it is not going to check this part of the code. In order to better understand all of this stuff, let's run the code. As you can see, the mark is 19 and only this part of the code should be executed. I mean, it should print A because the mark is greater than or equal to 18. So if I run a code, as you can see, yes, it's correct and it is printing A. But if instead of this LF, I use if, I mean, instead of typing LF, if I type if mark is greater than or equal to 15, in that case, you are going to have a problem. And the problem is that, as I've told you, when you're using if, it is going to check this condition no matter what. I mean, it, it doesn't care about the previous condition and the rest. So, I mean, for example, here, it is going to say, okay, the mark is 19, and it is here it is saying if the mark is greater than or equal to, a, greater than or equal to 18, and of course it is, so it is going to print A. And then it says, okay, it is asking me if the mark is greater than or equal to 15. Of course it is, 19 is greater than or equal to 15, so it is going to print B as well. So this is the problem of if. And if I run a code, as you can see, both of them, I mean, A and B, is printed. This is not something that we want. We want this part of the code be checked only if the previous part, I mean, this part, was not correct, was not uh, true. So in that case, we need to use LF and not F. So this is the difference between F and LF. If you use LF, it is going to check this part of the code only if the previous part, the previous condition, the previous condition or conditions were not correct, were not true. Otherwise, it is not going to check. It is not going to even check this part of the code, even from curiosity. But if you use if, it is definitely going to check this part no matter what. So that's why we need to use LF because you want to check this part only because you want to check this part only if the previous condition was not true. But what about other questions? For example, I'm sure that some people are asking this question. They're saying, oh, so here you have said that we are going to have something like this. We're going to say if the mark is less than 18, and also greater than or equal to 15. In that case, the score need to be B. But here you have only typed this part of the condition. Why you haven't, for example, typed this part of the condition? Why? In Persian, we have an idiom that says turning the bite around your head. It means making something much more complicated than it needs to be. So here is the same thing. If you want to turn the bite around your head, yes, in that case, you can also type this part of the condition as well, but you don't need to. Why? Why you don't need to? The reason is because as I've told you, LF is going to check only this part, only if the previous condition was not, the previous condition or conditions were not true. So if 
This was not true. Then we are going to check this one. So if this is not true, it means the mark is not greater than or equal to 18. It means the mark is less than 18. So as you can see, implicitly, it does have such a thing in itself. Implicitly, it is considering this fact that the mark needs to be uh, less than 18 because if the mark was not less than 18 if the mark was greater than a recall to 18 it was only printing a and it was not even checking this part but if it is checking this part it means that the mark is less than 18 so it is implicitly taking that into account so you don't need to manually type that as well you don't need to turn the byte around your head so this was the second question that you might ask and now let's talk about the third question <laughs> actually the third question is not a question it's something that you need to notice for example as i've told you in some countries like iran the marks are from 20. so in that case you should take this into account that the mark cannot be greater than 20. So here, we should simply, before checking anything else, here we should simply type if the mark is greater than 20. So in that case, I want to print something. I want to say, for example, I want to print a message like this. I want to say invalid entry or invalid mark or whatever. So that's it. And here, as I've told you, I should use LF and not if. Why? Because we want to check this part of the code only if the previous part, the previous condition was not true. But now I'm sure that some people are asking a question or actually not asking a question. They might raise something. They might say something. They might say, okay, okay but what about those scenarios that the user is going to pass a negative mark? What about those scenarios? How should we handle that? There is a problem. If you want to do so as well, so you can do it here, you can make this condition a little bit more complicated. So here you can say, okay, if the mark is greater than 20 or uh, the mark is less than zero, in that case, we're going to print invalid mark. So here we are using or in order to make this condition a little bit more complicated so we can use these types of things and also do you remember that i've told you that for example here you don't need to manually type if the mark is less than 18. i've told you that you don't need to turn as, as we say in persian you don't need to turn the bite around your head by saying if the mark was less than 18 because it is implicitly taking that into account but suppose that some people are the fan of turning the bite around their head. They want to explicitly say that as well. I mean, they want to explicitly say if the mark is less than 18. So how should how should they uh, how should those people that they are the fan of turning the bite around their head do so? In order to do so, they can simply say something like this. They can say, okay, if the mark is greater than or equal to 15 and the mark is less than 18 so if you want to turn the byte around your mark the, sorry if you want to turn uh the byte around your head this is how you can do so but actually you don't need to do so as i've told you if you type this it is going to implicitly take that thing into account. This was one of the videos of a step-by-step -step tutorial playlist of Python. You can find a link to that playlist in the description below. And also we have other playlists for other topics, which you can find them on the channel page.